Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us see how and where RNA creates proteins because we have already uh, discussed a lesson on cell. So there we have spoken about facts like uh, ribosomes are the cell organelles which are involved in protein synthesis. So let us see here. This entire structure is the structure of ribosome. Do you remember while we were talking about ribosomes, I told you there is something called 70S ribosome, 80S ribosome in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So it is made up of two units. One unit is small, the other unit is big. So these are the two units of ribosome. This is the smaller unit, this dark green in color, and this is the larger unit. So this is the larger structure. So this is your ribosome. So in the ribosome protein synthesis take place. So how does this happen? There is something called messenger RNA. Now RNA again are of three types. One is messenger RNA, one is transport RNA and the a third one is ribosomal RNA. We will talk about them in detail a little later. So this messenger RNA basically brings in the information which was stored in the DNA. So DNA was present inside the nucleus. So this messenger RNA brings in that information from DNA and it comes out of the nucleus and it reaches the ribosome. So once it goes to the ribosome, it gives that information and the ribosomes are synthesized. So here uh, proteins are synthesized. So here you can see newly born protein. So this is how RNA creates protein because RNA contains the information. Information here is nothing but the sequence of amino acids because the sequence of amino acids determine the traits and that those traits are the characteristics which are seen in an individual. So that is how RNA creates proteins. So let us talk about the nucleic acid compositions. Now complete hydrolysis of DNA or RNA yields a pentose sugar which can be a ribose or a deoxyribose sugar, a phosphoric acid that is the phosphate group and nitrogen containing hydro heterocyclic cyclic compounds called bases that is the nitrogenous bases. So as I said here also the uh, the nucleic acids are formed by the process of dehydration synthesis and the simpler substances are obtained by the process of hydrolysis. So the, that basic concept still remains the same. So when I talk about uh, the sugar, the sugar can be a ribose sugar like this or a deoxyribose sugar. So this is present in RNA and this is present in DNA. When I talk about the phosphoric acid, we are, we are talking about this phosphate group which is present in both RNA as well as DNA. When I talk about the nitrogenous basis, we are talking about this adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine. cytosine. So these are present in DNA. Whereas when we talk about RNA, the same nitrogenous bases are present except thymine. So thymine is not present in RNA. Instead, uracil is present. So this is present in RNA. Other than that, adenine, guanine and cytosine, they are also present in RNA. So let us quickly look at the DNA and RNA nucleobase. What is nucleobase? Nucleobase is nothing but this adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine and uracil. These are the double ring structures which are the purines. These are single ring structures which are pyrimidines. So please have a look at their structures that might help you. Talking about nucleosides, they are nothing but the base that is the nitrogenous base plus the pentose sugar that is ribose or deoxyribose. So this forms the nucleoside. So here if you see this is the ribose sugar. So ribose sugar with the nitrogenous base. So this is nucleoside. So this is ribonucleoside. Whereas in this case it is deoxyribose, deoxyribose sugar. So it is deoxyribonucleoside. So these are the nucleosides 
and the bases can be any of these as as i said now depending on the bases they can be named if the base is a cytosine it will be called cytidine if the base is uracil it will be called uridine if the base is thymine it will be called thymidine if the base is guanine it will be called guanosine and if the base is adenine it will be called adenosine so that is how the nucleosides will be named based on the name of the base and finally the nucleotides so when this nucleoside will combine with a phosphate group they will form nucleotide so this is your deoxy ribo this is your ribonucleotide and this is your deoxy ribonucleotide so let us talk about the nucleotides bond as i mentioned before also that nucleotides are joined together by a bond which is called phosphodiester linkage between 5 and 3 carbon atoms of the pentose sugar so if you see this is one nucleotide this is another nucleotide so when they combine together one h2o will be thrown out so and the bond will form between fifth and third carbon so fifth carbon is this one and third carbon of this is this one so if you see from this it will extract out one h2o so by the process of dehydration synthesis a phosphodiester bond will be formed so this is a phosphodiester bond it this bond is analogous to the glycosidic bond in carbohydrates and the peptide bonds in case of proteins so this is phosphodiester bond and this is how a nucleic acid chain will be formed base sugar phosphate again base sugar phosphate so this is the bond that is the phosphodiester bond and this is how it will look like so this is how the structure of nucleic acid will be if you see you have the nucleobases over the backbone in case of dna they'll pair up like the color this yellow color represents adenine and red color represents thymine so everywhere you see red will pair up with yellow red and yellow will be together that is because a will always pair up with thymine similarly g c and g will always be together that is blue and green so here if you see blue and green are always together so that is how the pairing up take place so let us now quickly look at the structure of nucleic acids now as i said since nucleic acids are very closely related to proteins proteins are made up of amino acids when we talk about nucleic acid there also the base is nothing but the amino acid sequence that denotes the base right so nucleic acids like proteins also have a primary structure a secondary structure and a tertiary structure so let us quickly look at each of these structure so when we talk about a primary structure it is basically the <coughs> the bases the nitrogenous bases arranged on the backbone and the backbone is made up of the uh, sugar phosphate group that is the ribophosphate group that is the backbone and on that you have the uh, bases now a group of three bases is known as a codon and each of these codon denotes a specific trait like for example when you look at the genetic traits which get passed on from one generation to another we talk about features right we say that okay the kid has got brown hair which he has inherited from his father so brown hair is a trait so these kind of traits are defined by the sequence of the bases and this sequence a sequence of three bases together is called a codon and each codon determines a particular feature or a particular characteristic so the primary structure is all about the sequence of these codons or sequence of the bases rather if you talk about the secondary structure it comes into picture when the primary structure gets coiled due to interaction amongst the bases with each other so here you can see these bases might also interact with each other that is what you saw here right like uh, a that is adenine will always interact with thymine it will always get bonded with thymine similarly guanine will always get bonded with cytosine so this interaction between the bases will lead to a coiled structure and this coiled structure is nothing but a secondary such structure so this helical structure in rna this is a single stranded structure in dna it is a double helical structure which is often known as a double helix 
talking about the tertiary structure it gets further folded to give a structure like this i mean i don't need to explain the concepts again because it is the same as proteins so there also we saw that as the interaction increases the uh, foldings also increases and the complexity of the structure also increases accordingly so these are the different structures of nucleic acids thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again